tonight. So I've titled tonight's teaching after, after, A-F-T-E-R, after. And I'm in the book of Genesis chapter 9, verse 28. So I've titled tonight's teaching after, and I'm in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 9, verse 28. And I'm literally only going to read that one verse. Genesis 9, 28 says, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years and Noah lived after the flood 350 years you know I read this verse today people of God and I got stuck at the first six words of the verse it says and Noah lived after the flood and Noah lived after the flood and I don't know about you tonight people of God but I'm facing some floods in my own life and sometimes it feels like you're going to be overtaken and consumed sometimes it feels like you're going to drown under the waves and no doubt Noah must have wondered what was going to happen to him and his family as he faced the worst flood that the earth had ever seen and the worst flood that the earth would ever see so the Bible says in Genesis chapter 7 in Genesis chapter 7, and I'm going to read verses 17 through 24 of Genesis chapter 7, and I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. The Bible says, the flood, the great downpour of rain, was 40 days and nights on the earth. And the waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it floated high above the land. The waters became mighty and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the waters. The waters prevailed so greatly and were so mighty and overwhelming on the earth so that all the high mountains everywhere under the heavens were covered. In fact, the waters became 15 cubits, that's about 23 feet, 15 cubits higher than the highest ground and the mountains were covered. All living beings that moved on the earth perished. Birds and cattle, domestic animals, wild animals, all things that swarm and crawl on the earth and all mankind, everything on the dry land, all in whose nostrils were the breath and spirit of life died. God destroyed, blotted out, wiped away every living thing that was on the surface of the earth, man and animals and the crawling things and the birds of the heavens were destroyed from the land. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. The waters covered all of the earth for 150 days, five, which is five months. Amen. So I read Genesis 17, I mean Genesis 7, sorry, verses 17 through 24 from the Amplified Version. That was the flood people of God that Noah and his family were caught up in, in Genesis 7. And there are those tonight who feel like we're in a Genesis 7 season where you feel like you are literally caught up in a flood. Things are hitting you from all angles. You feel overwhelmed. You feel overtaken. You feel consumed. You feel helpless. You know, this evening I was on my face in tears before the Lord. And after I poured out my soul to him and I got up off the ground, he highlighted verse 18 to me. Of Genesis chapter 7 and verse 18 says the waters became mighty and increased greatly on the earth and the ark floated on the surface of the waters that's the scripture that he highlighted to me the waters became mighty and increased greatly on the earth and the ark floated on the surface of the waters and what the Lord was saying to me is that even though the waters are becoming mighty around me and the floods are increasing greatly in my life, what has been built through the years of prayer, my own personal ark, that is what will keep me afloat. That is what has kept me afloat. That is what is keeping me afloat. I may feel like I'm being overtaken, but I'm actually floating on the surface of what is trying to take me out. And I don't want you to miss that tonight, people of God, because he's saying the same thing to you. There is an ark in your life that has been built 
that has been fortified through your diligence in prayer, through fasting, through your tears, through your worship, through your studying of the word. You may think that your prayers don't mean anything. You may think God is not hearing you when you pray. You may think your prayers are not being answered, but they're literally forming an ark. It has been built and it has been fortified through everything that you have gone through. And it is this ark that is going to sustain you through the floods when you feel like you're going to be taken out. Prayers that you have prayed in seasons past, that is what is going to hold you and keep you in a season where you feel like you can't pray for yourself. Prayers that you've prayed in the past, that is what is going to strengthen you when you feel like floods are trying to overtake you. Hear me tonight by the Spirit of the Lord. God can give you the ability to build something that you've never heard of, something that you didn't even know could ever be built, something that you weren't even aware that you were building. He can uh, uh, give you the ability to build it and cause it to be sustained through life-threatening seasons and circumstances. Many of you tonight have been building, building up fortitude, building up a place of strength in your inner man, even through prayer, even through fasting, and you're not even aware aware that that is what is happening but it is going to sustain you through life-threatening seasons and tonight you may feel like you're in a genesis 7 situation you may feel like you're in a genesis 7 season where it feels like things are coming in the floods are closing in you're being overwhelmed hear me by the spirit of the lord but genesis 9 is coming you feel like you're in Genesis 7 right now where the water is overwhelming you. But Genesis 9 is coming. The Bible says in Genesis 9, 28, and Noah lived after the flood. Come on tonight, people of God. After the waters were raising and the flood was, was, was overtaking everything. We read about how many people died and all the animals, everything was wiped out. But here we come to Genesis 9, 28, and the Bible says, and Noah lived after the flood that is what i've come to speak to you tonight about people of god that there is going to be an after you're not going to die in this flood you're not going to die in this situation you are going to live after the flood and i prophesy to you tonight as i prophesy to myself you will live after the flood there is going to be an after it is not going to take you out it is not going to take you over i don't care how consuming and overwhelming it feels. I don't care how much you feel like you're in it by yourself. There is an ark of safety. Hear me tonight by the spirit of the Lord. There is an ark of safety that you have unknowingly built through years of intimacy and relationship with God. And this is going to sustain you through the flood. You are not alone people of God. And this is why, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is why it is so important for us to pray when we have the strength to pray. This is why it is important. The word of God says, pray without ceasing. This is why it is important because there are going to be seasons when you feel like you're caught in a flood, where you feel like you're caught in overwhelming situations and you do not know what to pray, or you don't feel like you have the strength to pray. It is the prayers that you have prayed in seasons past that are going to sustain you in the seasons when you feel like you don't have anything to say, like you don't have the strength or the resolve to even press into God. God, hear me tonight. There is an ark of safety glory that you have unknowingly built through years of intimacy and relationship with God. Intimacy with God is never wasted, people of God. Never wasted. It feels like you're being afflicted, but you're really afloat. Come on, glory, glory. The Holy Spirit said that to me this evening while I was on my face in tears. He said, it feels like you're being afflicted, but you're really afloat. Come on. You're not being consumed. You're not being overwhelmed. We said on the prayer call a couple of weeks ago that you're not, you're not in a season of frustration. You're in a season of travail. You are bringing forth something in this season, people of God. So it feels like you're being afflicted, but you are really afloat. Glory to God. Come on tonight. You are a survivor. Because of what you're in, because of the ark of protection and safety that you're in, and because of who is in you. You are not in this by yourself. 
After crying my eyes out in prayer this evening, this is the word that I came up off of my face with. Hear me tonight, people of God. People will leave you. Situations will change. But you have a loving father who has already made provisions for you after the flood. After the flood. I know it feels like you're going to die in it. I know it feels like it's going to consume you and overwhelm you and take you out. But provisions have been made for you after the flood. There is an after. There is an after. I want you to be encouraged tonight. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church tonight. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you glory god we thank you for this word i even thank you for those that are even saying on periscope that this word is confirmation for them and that they're encouraged lord we thank you for your word tonight we thank you for your word tonight god thank you that you never leave us comfortless thank you that you never leave us without a covering thank you god that you promise never to leave us or forsake us you said in isaiah 43 that when we pass through the waters you will be with us and through the rivers they shall not overflow us this is a promise that you have given us even before we enter into flood-like situations you've already told us that you're going to be with us you've already told us that it is not going to overflow us and we thank you tonight glory that we will outlive the floods that we may be experiencing in this season. For some tonight, it's a financial flood. It feels like things are coming at you back to back to back where you can't catch a break. Where the minute you get some money, it goes out into a bill because something else comes up. For some tonight, it's an emotional flood. You're dealing with anxiety and ruminating thoughts about your life and past mistakes, worrying about the future and what you're going to do. We are facing different floods tonight, God, but you are able to keep and to sustain us through them all. It doesn't matter if our floods are different. You are able to keep us and sustain us. And God, we thank you tonight for the arcs that have been built over the years through our intercession session and are pressing into you we thank you for arcs that have been built that have been established god i thank you because many on the call tonight feel sometimes like their prayers are in vain many on the call tonight feel like you're not listening like because their circumstances have not changed their prayers have gone unanswered but we thank you that you're even revealing tonight that arcs are being built even through our prayers and these prayers of past seasons are going to sustain us as we press into you in this season we thought many times that we weren't being heard but our prayers were really being stored up and used to sustain us through seasons of distress through flood waters and god we thank you tonight we thank you that nothing is wasted with you glory nothing is wasted with you no tear is wasted glory no prayer is wasted god no sacrifice is wasted no time of fasting and consecration is wasted nothing has been wasted god and we thank you tonight we thank you tonight. You have called us more than conquerors. That is what your word says. You told us that because you overcame, we too will overcome. And we stand upon your word tonight, God. There will be glory after this. There will be life after this. There will be joy after this. There will be peace after this glory. And we thank you, God, that we have been granted access. We thank you, God, that we are walking into a season of replevin we thank you that we are walking into a season of divine recompense we thank you tonight god in the name of jesus that everything that seemed to have been swept away in the flood was really stored away glory for this season and i hear that i hear that for somebody on the call tonight you feel like there are things that you lost in seasons past you feel like things were swept away you feel like things were stolen but i hear 
hear the Lord saying tonight, things that you thought were swept away were really stored away for this season. Glory. I feel you, Holy Spirit. You told us, God, on Tuesday that what was kept back and what was set apart is now being released to us. So, Father, we receive the truth of your word. We don't look at what's happening around us, but we receive the truth of your word tonight. The Bible says Noah lived 350 years after the flood. Glory to God. He did not only survive the flood, but he lived 350 years after the flood glory glory to God. And I just heard that for somebody tonight. You fear that this current flood-like situation is going to take you out. You fear like it is going to, to alter your life so negatively that you won't have much of a life left afterwards. But God is saying, not only will you outlive this, but you will have years of life to enjoy. Whoever that word is for tonight, receive it by the Spirit of the Lord. You're not only going to outlive it, but you're going to have years of life to enjoy. Noah lived 950 years in all. So he was about 600 years old when the flood hit. He probably thought that he did not have much more life to live, but the Bible says he lived another 350 years. God, we thank you for another after the after glory. We thank you for another after the after. We thank you that there will be life after this God. Glory glory to God. We thank you that there will be life after this. We thank you, God. Glory. We thank you that there is a future and a reward and our hope and our expectation will not be cut off. Glory. That is what your word says. That is what your word says. And we put you in remembrance of your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight I just pray for strength for your people. I pray for comfort, God. I pray for peace. I pray for encouragement. Some of us feel like we're going through alone. And I even just pray tonight for intercessors who will come alongside us and stand in the gap on our behalf. I pray tonight for those who will cover us in prayer like our lives depend on it. I pray tonight, God, that you will raise up true divine connections in this season in the name of Jesus. Even as I cried out to you this evening, God, and I ask you to send out an SOS in the spirit. I ask you tonight to lay us on the hearts of people who will cry out to you on our behalf. In the moments when we feel like we cannot pray, in the moments when we feel like we don't have the words to express, what is happening. I ask you, God, to lay us on the hearts of people who will cry out to you on our behalf. We thank you tonight, God, for the arcs that you have helped us to construct and that you continue to sustain and maintain through difficult seasons. We ask you, God, thank you, God, to help us to not depart from the secret place. Because I'm sensing, people of God, that there are those of you, because of what you're going through, you, you're saying to yourself, what's the point of praying? There's nothing happening when I pray. And it is a plan of the enemy to pull you away from the secret place. Psalm 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is the aim of the enemy to get you from under the shadow of the almighty where you are exposed, where you are not covered. So father, tonight I ask you to help us not to depart from the secret place of the most high. No matter how hard it gets glory, no matter how high the flood waters rise, help us not to depart from the secret place. God, keep us ever in pursuit of you. Let nothing else matter, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let nothing else matter, God, but our pursuit of you. I even pray for a reordering and a reestablishing of our priorities in the name of Jesus. Reorder and reestablish our priorities, God, the priorities of our hearts. I pray for a reordering and a reestablishing in the name of Jesus. We seek you first, God. We put you first, God, for truly you are our refuge and our strength. 
our ever-present help in the time of trouble. And we decree and declare that we are survivors tonight. We decree and declare that we will live after this. Whatever the this is in our individual lives, whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, we decree and declare that we will live after this. We are not afflicted, but we are afloat. Glory. We are not afflicted. We are afloat. That is what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And we thank you for the ark. We thank you for being our lifeboat, God. Glory. We thank you for being our lifeboat, for being our preserver, for being our covering, for being our rescuer. We thank you tonight, God. And we ask you to strengthen our hearts as we ride out the storm. Glory. Strengthen our hearts tonight, Father. As we ride out this storm, for those of you on Periscope, I want you to join with me and do this prophetic act of putting up an emoji of a boat or a ship or something on the screen. He is our preserver in this season, glory. He is our lifeboat in this season. Our prayers have been like an ark, but he is our ultimate ark. He covers us. He carries us. He, he, he preserves us. He protects us. Father, we thank you tonight. And I just pray protection over every person under the sound of my voice tonight, God. Glory. I, I hear you, Holy Spirit. You see the things that we are going through. You see the circumstances that are facing your people even on this call. We thank you, God, that you are leading us to safety. We thank you that there is an after. We thank you that there is an after, that we will not die here we will not die at this place, in this place, at this time, in this season. But we thank you, God, that there will be glory after this. And we thank you that you're taking us out and you're taking us through. So, God, I cover every person under the sound of my voice, under your blood tonight, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that there have been prayers that have gone ahead of us. And for some of you, the Holy Spirit is saying, it's not even your prayers. It's prayers of your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents and your great-great-great-grandparents. Their prayers have gone ahead of you. And they're sustaining you in this season. Glory. God, we thank you tonight. We just put on the whole armor of God. We put on the helmet of salvation tonight. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We take the shield of faith. We take the sword of the spirit. We gird our loins with truth. We shot our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace tonight. We are suited and booted in you. Even as we go through the storm, even as we go through the flood, we are covered by the armor of God. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. So Father, I thank you tonight. And I bless your name for every person on this call. I thank you that it was no coincidence that they tuned in tonight. I thank you that this word was on time, that it was a to the heart word, that you cut this word several ways, that it will apply specifically to the needs and the hearts of your people. Just as Noah lived after the flood, we can just put our names, we can insert our names in that scripture glory. And for those of you on the free conference call line, I want you to do that. I want you to say out of your mouth, and Nisha and lived after the flood, and Howard lived after the flood, and Beldine lived after the flood. All of you that are on the free conference call line, and for those of you on Periscope, I want you to put your name in that scripture. I want you to put your name and Sharon lived after the flood and Joanna lived after the flood and Sandy lived after the flood and Ollie lived after the flood. I want you to put your name in that scripture and Kamisha lived after the flood. Glory, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We will live after the flood. We will live after the flood. We give you glory tonight, God. We magnify your name. We exalt you, Father. We thank you. We lift you high, God. And we thank you for this word of encouragement tonight. Let us let it let it resonate in our spirits. Let it resonate in our spirits, God. Let us personalize the scriptures and put it in, in, in context with our own circumstances and claim the victory. Claim the victory in our own circumstances in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. God, we thank you tonight. 
We give you the glory tonight, God. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Cover us under your blood, God. Keep us even throughout the weekend. Let that scripture resonate in our spirit. And Noah lived after the flood. And Noah lived after, after the flood. The flood that wiped out everybody else. Noah lived after the flood. God, we thank you. We thank you for this word of encouragement tonight, Father. And we just give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. People of God, I pray that your hearts were encouraged and stirred by this word tonight. I have my voice is hoarse because I've been crying for the greater part of this evening. God is a God who hears and answers prayer. He hears and answers prayer and you will live after this. You will live after this. You will not die. This flood will not take you out. I love you guys so much. I am praying for you. Continue to keep the midnight cry prayer call lifted in prayer. Have a safe weekend. And by the grace of God, we'll be back on the prayer call again on Tuesday at midnight Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you guys.